this tape, my champions will show you 20 of the best exercises to develop your back and your biceps. These exercises are programmed to develop your upper back, your lower back, your lats, to give you a muscular V-shaped back, and also define your arms, making them bigger, more defined, with a higher peak, a back and arms that you will truly be proud of. The primary muscles of the middle and upper back are the latissimus dorsi and the rhomboids. These muscles have two basic functions. They pull the entire shoulder girdle back and to a lesser extent, pull it down. Pullback exercises pull the entire shoulder girdle to the rear in opposition to the pectoral muscles, which attach the shoulders to the front. Pullback exercises are all rowing movements. The shoulders start from a position in which they're shrugged fully forward, the pectoral muscles are squeezed and the back muscles are stretched. Now pull backwards against the resistance until the shoulders are as far to the rear as possible. The shoulder blades are almost touching. The primary muscles of the upper back are the latissimus dorsi, which extends, abducts, and rotates the arm medially, draws the shoulder downward and backward, and the rhomboidius major and minor, which draw the scapula medially toward the vertebral column. Pull-down exercises, such as chins or cable pull-downs, involve a more limited motion. At the start of the movement, the shoulder girdle is lifted upwards as if you're trying to touch your shoulders to your ears. You then pull down against resistance as far as you can in a reverse shrug motion, fully contracting your back muscles. Pull-back exercises account for about two-thirds of back development. Pull-down movements contribute about one-third. The weak link in back training is the biceps. The back is a large muscle, whereas the biceps are small. The amount of weight needed to build the back, the biceps cannot handle. So the key is, is to keep the arms out of the movement. You want to use the arms as hooks instead of using them to curl the weight. When rowing is done this way, the arms are only used to connect the weight to the body. They don't assist in actually lifting the weight. For the same reason, when you do a chin or a pull down movement, you have to concentrate on doing most of the work with the lats, with the shoulders being pulled downward and the arms not bending much, but serving merely as hooks to connect you to the bar overhead. Another problem to avoid is too much involvement of the lower back. When you row or pull down, you should avoid cheating by pulling with the lower back and swaying to the rear, or else the primary muscles you're targeting in the exercises don't get enough work. The basic movement in the lower back training is simple. You start from a bent over position and then you stand erect. You bend over to pick something up, then you stand up straight again. This lifting and straightening of the torso involves direct action of the spinal erectors. Since the normal function of the spinal erectors is to stabilize rather than work through a full range of motion, they are the slowest muscles in the body to recuperate fully from exercise. Therefore, they only need to be worked once a week. You can avoid overtraining the lower back by alternating light and heavy workouts. Incidentally, you'll find that the use of the lower back muscles occurs to some degree in a variety of other different movements. are one of the best but most demanding mass builders for the back. You need to grasp the bar with a wide enough grip to make the lats do most of the work rather than the biceps. And be sure to drive the bar upwards to the lower abs, not to the chest. Otherwise, you have the same problem of involving too much biceps effort. Most bodybuilders do bend over rows with fairly heavy weight to build maximum mass, which makes it difficult to do the exercise without at least some cheating. 
This is acceptable if you're careful not to straighten up too much during the exercise and concentrate on squeezing the shoulders back as far as possible at the top of the movement. However, when you do bend over rows with somewhat lighter weights, it is possible to do this exercise a lot more strictly. But in either case, the essential things to remember are to lift and squeeze with the back, bringing the shoulders as far as possible to the rear, and try to keep any cheating involving the legs or lifting up with the lower back to a minimum. T-bar rows are a stricter form of bent over rowing. With this exercise, cheating is not recommended at all. Bend your knees, get yourself in as stable and grounded a position as possible, then pull the weight up toward your chest, shrugging your shoulders back as far as possible to squeeze the back muscles together. Then let the shoulders come forward again and feel the big muscles of the back extend and stretch to the maximum. Concentrate on keeping the weight under full control throughout the entire range of motion in this exercise. Again, concentration is the key. Use T-bar rowing to carve and sculpt the maximum detail possible into the muscles of the upper middle back. The T-bar for me is the bread and butter. Um, when you think of thickness, back thickness, you think of what exercise allows you to move the maximum amount of weight and the most comfortable way to move it. The T-bar is a close grip movement. You're bringing the weight. The upper back middle muscles are contracting maximally. There's no long stretch of the lat involved here, simply because you're concentrating on the upper middle. And that's the area of the back where a lot of activity can be developed in today's bodybuilders which will give you that resemblance of uh, Albert Beckles, for example, with that type of detail. You don't get that detail by doing um, one-arm rows. And a lot of young guys and professionals today are doing, you know, sticking to the same regime. I like to now think that there's a little step to go beyond that, and you have to bring those secondary muscles into play. T-bar gives you mass and thickness, and that's what that section of my back training will always consist of. Using one-arm rows, you can isolate each side of the upper back in turn. However, this exercise can be more difficult to do than it seems. For one thing, be sure to bring the dumbbell back toward your hip rather than up toward your chest and shoulder, which turns the movement into more of a curl than a back exercise. And when you lift, concentrate on the feeling of squeezing your back muscles together both sides, not just the side with which you're lifting. Otherwise, you'll tend to rotate your body as you lift rather than making the big back muscles do the work by themselves. For maximum stability, try leaning with your free arm on a bench, weight rack, or some other support to keep your body steady and fully grounded throughout the movement. Chins are probably the most traditional of all pull-down type back exercises. However, they can be very difficult because you are dealing with your entire body weight in this exercise. And women in particular have trouble starting out working against this much resistance. If chins are too tough for you at the beginning, try building up your strength with cable pull-downs or have a workout partner hold onto your ankles to provide the lift you need to do your set of chins. If you have difficulty holding onto the bar during chins, wrist straps can be used to help strengthen and secure your grip. Chins can be done behind the neck, which is a very strict and demanding form of the exercise, or to the front, 
which is slightly easier since some of the pullback function of the back mixes in to help in the pull down effort. Ideally, you should try to include both behind the neck and front chins in your various workouts for maximum back development. The most impressive thing to me is when a bodybuilder is standing on stage in the relaxed pose and they have the V taper from the lats down to a small waist and then their small hips and then they come out with the balloon thighs. So for me, when I train my back, I always envision uh, what I want to look like on stage and I really want to have that small waist and to get that, I've got to have the illusion of a big wide back. So I concentrate a lot on doing wide grip chins. Cable rows are an intense exercise for the upper middle back. As you lower the weight, you should concentrate on feeling the shoulders being pulled as far forward as possible, rounding the back, stretching the lats, and squeezing the pectoral muscles together. As you pull the handles back, focus on bringing the shoulders as far back as possible, squeezing the shoulder blades together and sticking out your chest. At the top of the movement, it's as if you're coming to attention. Chest out, shoulders back. One mistake to watch out for doing cable rows is involving too much lower back. As you stretch forward, do so from the upper back with the shoulders coming forward and lats stretching. Don't bend forward from the waist any more than is necessary. Otherwise, you end up working the spinal erectors of the lower back, which takes away the intensity from the upper back muscles you're trying to target. As with all rowing exercises, think in terms of using the back to pull the shoulders to the rear and try to limit how much work the arms are doing. Biceps will be involved any time you curl your arms, but think of the arms merely as hooks that help connect the back to the resistance of the weight stack, rather than as muscles primarily involved in the exercise. Remember, strictness and range of motion are the keys to cable rows. Use a weight that's light enough to allow your shoulders to go all the way forward and all the way back. Otherwise, you won't be able to involve the smaller muscles of the upper back, and you'll end up with mass, but not enough detail. Your seated cable rolls, for example, are a repetitious movement of a T-bar. I think if you notice the direction of the weight, how it's being pulled through the chest at each level, one, you're simply seated, the other one, you're bent over, same movement, you know, it's the exact same movement. You become smarter and clever, I think, by utilizing the row, seated row, to do more of the contracting movements and not trying to move the whole rack by seated. Do the T-bar. Let that be the mass builder and work that same area, but you have much more control and that inertia and gravity is on your side. You'll find a variety of different types of rolling machines in most good gyms. Most of these machines give you support against which to lean your chest, which helps you to stabilize your torso and work the back that much more strictly. Rowing with machines is generally not recommended for building mass and strength, but machines do allow you to work through a long range of motion and to bring out all the detail and muscularity of the upper back. The keys to machine rowing are strict technique, full range of motion, lighter weights, and relatively high reps. And as with all rows, 
concentrate on pulling back with the shoulders, not the arms. Pull downs are a variation of chins, which allow you to work with different levels of resistance, less than your body weight, or when necessary, more than your body weight. The strictest kind of pull down movement is the behind the neck pull down. In this exercise, the feeling you want to concentrate on is that of the entire shoulder girdle being lifted upward, then shrugging back down as the bar is brought down to the back of the neck. This feeling of the shoulder girdle, which includes the shoulders, trapezius muscles, and shoulder blades, the whole thing, lifting upward as far as possible, then crunching down as far as possible, is what you need to concentrate on to get the maximum benefit from the behind the neck pull downs. Again, try to keep the arms out of the exercise as much as you can. Remember, although the biceps will contract during this movement, it is not designed to be a biceps exercise. Again, think of the arms merely as hooks that attach the back muscles to the bar. Stretch the lats on the way up and then squeeze and crunch them on the way down with the effort focused on the back muscles, not the arms. Wide grip pull downs to the front are another variation of the pull down movement which bodybuilders use primarily to build maximum width in the latissimus muscles. In this variation, the bar is brought down to the top of the chest rather than behind the neck. However, don't lean too far back as you bring the bar down, otherwise you involve too much lower back effort. Holding the bar with a close grip, the pull down movement tends to focus the effort on the inner muscles of the upper back. With this variation, it's really easy to make the mistake of using too much arm effort and turning the exercise into some kind of biceps curl. Instead, concentrate on making the back do the work. Feel it stretch, then contract, and use the arms simply as hooks to connect your back to the resistance of the weight. And at the bottom of the movement, try to achieve a maximum peak contraction of the muscles in the center of the upper back. Contract them as intensely as possible at the bottom of the movement before releasing and letting the bar draw the shoulder girdle upward again. When I'm using the wide grip pull down, for example, my whole concentration is for width. You know, I'm training width, therefore the execution is very important. My execution of it is to make sure that my back is arced, the weight is going horizontal up and down, not vertical, because I find too many people training that movement are leaning way back. You know, they may as well be doing seated rowing, trying to get the same result. Um, for me, doing the uh, lat pull down is an isolation movement, contracting the movement at the top, squeezing it down, halfway down, contracting even more, um, holding it and releasing it slowly, controlling the weight back up, getting more from the negative just as much as a positive on the push-pull of, of the execution. So when I do the, um, the lat pull down, it's all about the width. You know, it's not about the weight because you, I don't see you getting weight adding to your width. You have to control the width movement. Performing hyperextensions on a hyperextension bench, the key to success is slow, deliberate movements done under full control. The spinal erectors of the lower back are stabilizer muscles. They aren't designed for speed or power. So lower your upper body under full control. Pause at the bottom. Then come deliberately up to a position just above parallel and hold this position for a moment before doing your next rep.
good mornings get their name from the bowing motion you use to work the lower back muscles. As with hyperextensions, you want to do this movement very deliberately and strictly and under full control at all times. Bend forward from the waist with a bar held across your shoulders. Come down until your upper body is about parallel to the floor. If you keep your knees bent slightly during the movement, you'll take some of the excess stress off the lower back. Also, this is not a mass and power exercise. You use deadlifts to build maximum strength in the lower back area, as you'll see in tape number seven. So stick to light to medium weight and very strict technique to get the most out of good mornings. Back routine number one. Bend over rows. Four sets of 10 reps. Behind the neck chins. Four sets of 10 reps. Cable rows. Four sets of 10 reps. Behind the neck are wide grip pull downs. Four sets of 10 reps. Hyper extension. Three sets of 12 to 15 reps. Don't monitor your progress based on the people you're around or the pictures you see in the magazines. Monitor your progress based on your commitment to your diet, your commitment to your working out, your intensity levels, and what you see in the mirror. On one day, I may not do any T-bar. Everything will be cable. We'll talk and we'll do about six different movements, uh, some of which I've invented, I think, you know, as long as it gets the job done. Um, I'm very smart to a point. I don't want to use movements that are going to cause injury just for the sake of using extra weight. So cable work could be used extensively, but the weight will also be compatible to the movement. Back routine number two. T-bar rows. Four sets of 10 reps. Front chin. Four sets of 10 reps. One arm dumbbell rows. Four sets of 10 reps. Close grip pull down. Four sets of 10 to 12 reps. Good morning. Four sets of 12 to 15 reps. You take the back, for instance. I mean, the, the guys that were the best backs in, in my day were guys like uh, Eiferman, uh, Jack Dillinger, and all these guys were all very... All past Mr. Americas. All past Mr. Americas. All guys who were big into back, movements like bent over rowing, barbell bent over rowing, all had were they phenomenal going heavy? backs. Eater and I were using 400 pounds 40 years ago exactly. and rowing. Right. Yeah, that's incredible. And, and how I many repetitions? Eight, sixes and eights. But I six think this is eights. one of the things that molded the, the backs of that particular period. You know, if you look at the backs of that particular period, there were some great backs. Jack Dillinger's back way back in 48, 49, 
was comparable to a lot of guys today. Right. Um, you know, Marvin, Lots Marvin of muscle, had death. rounded, yeah. and, and I think I think that has to be done, but by the same rule, not just that, not purely and simply that, but shape right. work with one arm dumbbell work sure. and overhead. So you work in scapular isolations, getting length of latissimus, not only getting depth of latissimus. You really got to train your back, and you got to take more uh, importance on form and not so much importance on weight. You don't have to become a bodybuilder in order to have a strong back and have a good posture, but you have to at least train it control the weight, don't let it control you. And the squeeze in the repetitions, control it, that brings in the detail, that brings in that growth, gets you past the sticking point. The biceps are a two-headed structure that originate at the shoulder and insert into the forearm below the elbow. Now the basic exercise for the bicep is a curl, which is a one-jointed isolation movement that goes from the elbow. The basic function of the bicep, though, is to curl the forearm up to the shoulder, and that's going to oppose the strength of the tricep, although they also help to lift the whole arm and also supinate the forearm. This type of curl hits the muscles slightly different, but they all involve pulling the forearm up to the shoulder. The biceps brachii is a two-headed muscle placed on the anterior aspect of the upper arm that flexes the arm, flexes the forearm, and supinates the hand. The long head draws the humerus, the upper arm bone, upward, strengthening the shoulder joint. In biceps training, the emphasis is on control and isolation. Heavy weights aren't needed. Your back training gives you plenty of that. For example, heavy rowing, a two-joint movement, also puts a lot of demand on the biceps. You're better off concentrating on isolating the biceps to minimize the involvement of other muscles. Avoid the heavy cheat type of movements. You'll find that some exercises are tougher than others to isolate the biceps. Standing barbell curls, for instance, must involve the front delts, traps, and lower back. Just keep concentrating on your biceps isolation as much as you can. It's easier with such exercises as the preacher curl. It's ideal for biceps isolation, as are many kinds of cable and machine curls. Bodybuilders tend to drastically overtrain their arms. Both biceps and triceps are such small muscles, and as we said, they are subject to a lot of stress when you train your back, your chest, and your shoulders. So you don't need to do endless sets and reps during your arm workouts. I mean, 12 sets each for biceps and triceps is plenty. And I know a lot of bodybuilders who prefer doing less. This is a good place to talk about supination. Any bodybuilder will tell you that to fully peak the biceps when you hit a pose, you need to twist the wrist or supinate it as far as possible. This applies to training as well. As you are lifting the weight during a dumbbell curl, twist the wrist slightly, turn your thumb outward as you do the curl. Barbell curls are the closest thing to a mass builder you'll find in biceps training. However, since this is still a one joint isolation exercise, you don't want to pile on too much poundage. Working too heavy means you have to cheat too much, and you end up building your traps and lower back rather than isolating your biceps. To do barbell curls effectively, keep your upper body steady throughout the movement and the weight under full control. Feel a steady, continuous tension as you raise and lower the weight. When you curl the weight to the top, feel the biceps fully contract. 
And at the bottom, let your biceps muscles fully stretch and extend. As with any isolation movement, the key to success is control and concentration. Think about what the muscles are doing and how they feel rather than what's happening to the weight. The biomechanics for the curl, for instance, you want to always go through the full range of motion. Some athletes have a tendency, tendency to do these short, jerky kind of ranges. Well, there aren't many things that you do in just this motion. You want to build strength throughout that range of motion and be in control of the resistance throughout the range of motion. You don't want to throw the weight up because again, what goes up must come down and then you deal with inertial forces of gravity, acceleration, as well as the weight itself. You want to control that weight. Alternate dumbbell curls allow you to isolate and work each biceps muscle individually. As you curl with one arm and then with the other, concentrate on supinating your wrists as you lift. That is, turning your hand so that the thumb goes outward and downward. This gives you a total peak contraction of the biceps at the top of the movement. You can do dumbbell curls by alternating first one arm and then the other, which is a very strict form of the movement. Or you can curl both arms simultaneously. For additional strictness, try doing dumbbell curls sitting on an inclined bench. However, no matter what variation you choose, remember to concentrate on controlling the weight at all times performing a smooth, continuous movement and keeping the mind in the muscle. Think about what the biceps are doing rather than the weight. Dumbbell curls, especially when you supinate the wrist during the exercise, are designed to give you the maximum peak possible in the biceps. Hammer curls, on the other hand, because you pronate your wrist about 90 degrees when you do the movement, tend to focus the effort on the outer head of the biceps on the outside of the arm. You can feel this happening when you do the lift. In fact, with hammer curls and all other exercises, you should make an effort to feel exactly how different grips and different variations change the way your muscles feel during the movement. This awareness of what the muscles are doing, the ability to keep your mind totally in the muscle, is one of the keys to developing maximum intensity in bodybuilding training. Some athletes are so interested in the size and definition of their bicep, they'll do many, many, many sets of curls over and over and over again. And sometimes the bicep can start to spasm because this person has done so many sets for just one body part. So it's important to not only go through the full range of motion while you're training that body part, but at the termination of your curl or bicep motions to go through a range of motion with an easy stretch. Concentration curls, as the name implies, involve the most concentration and isolation of the biceps exercises. The idea is to curl the weight up towards your chest using only the biceps with no help from any other muscles. Some bodybuilders like doing concentration curls with their arms hanging free. But many others prefer grounding themselves more fully 
by leaning their elbow against the inside of the thigh, making it even easier to totally isolate the biceps muscles. Preacher curls are another good isolation exercise for the biceps. By keeping the elbows firmly in place on the bench, you can ensure that only the biceps are doing the work in the movement. However, anytime you lock the elbows in place like this, you're putting more stress on them. So use preacher curls as a detail peaking exercise and be sure not to use so much weight that you risk putting too much stress on the elbow joint. When you do preacher curls, you can use a barbell, an easy curl bar, or you can further isolate each biceps muscle by doing preacher dumbbell curls, one arm at a time. You'll find a variety of different curl machines in most well-equipped gyms. These machines allow you to do curls against smooth, continuous resistance and frequently feature some kind of cam-created variable resistance. As with other machines like these, they are best used for higher rep, lower resistance, finishing offsets. With machine curls, you shouldn't expect to build a great deal of mass and strength. So instead, go for full range of motion, very strict, detail and quality movements. Cables allow you to do a great variety of different kinds of curl movements. You can perform one-arm cable curls as demonstrated here. Or you can use a bar instead of a handle and do the cable equivalent of standing barbell curls. By combining a preacher bench with different kinds of handles, you can do various kinds of preacher curls and one-arm preacher curls. Remember in all cases that a curl is a curl is a curl. No matter what kind of equipment you're using, free weights, cables, machines, it's what you do with the muscle that counts. Feel the biceps extend to full extension then contract smoothly under control to achieve a total peak contraction.
One thing to remember when you're training biceps is they get a, a large volume of work when you're training uh, other compound movements uh, like back and it's getting a tremendous amount of work. That's why it's so important to isolate the bicep and not cheat and not end up using your traps and shoulders and pecs when you're, when you're training your biceps by themselves. You have to learn to isolate and concentrate on the muscle group you're training. Biceps routine number one. Standing barbell curls. Four sets of 10 reps. Seated dumbbell curls. Four sets of 10 reps. Concentration curls. Four sets of 10 to 12 reps. Biceps routine number two. Easy bar curls. 